Okay, I want to come back and talk about shear thinning fluids because these kinds of materials are, are things that we encounter quite a bit uh, in engineering. And one question is how can we model the dependence of viscosity on the deformation rate or the shear rate? So I showed before uh, if I plot the viscosity coefficient as a function of the shear rate, uh, if that decreases, if that's a decreasing function, then that's a signature of shear thinning behavior. Uh, and for many fluids, if I were to plot the viscosity coefficient as a function of shear rate on a log scale, the data may look like this. At very low shear rates or slow flows, the viscosity coefficient is approximately constant. Then as I increase the shear rate or the deformation rate further, I start to see shear thinning behavior and the behavior is such that there's approximately a linear relationship between the viscosity and the shear rate on a log scale. Okay, and so remember this is covering a wide range of shear rates uh, because this is a, on, a, on a log scale, powers of 10. So this region for slow flows or low shear rates where the viscosity is approximately constant is called the Newtonian plateau because in this regime the fluid exhibits Newtonian behavior. The viscosity coefficient is approximately constant. This regime at higher shear rates or faster flows we call the power law region. And the reason we call it that is because we can express in this regime the relationship between the viscosity coefficient and the shear rate uh, as some kind of power law function. So this just explains the, the relationship in this limit uh, of, of higher shear rates. So one way that's conventionally expressed is to express the viscosity coefficient as some constant k times the shear rate to some power. And that power is written as n minus 1. So this k and n are constants that are material specific. And n in particular is of interest. That's the power law index. Uh, and it's usually around a value of a half or so for um, for non-Newtonian fluids, we'll see that in a minute. You can see as n goes to 1, this exponent goes to 0. I recover Newton's law of viscosity for a Newtonian fluid uh, as the power law index goes to 1. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this. Um, you know, why, why, is, why this power law? Why did we choose this? Well, it's the simplest fit uh, that you can imagine for, um, for this behavior because we, we can see that there's approximately a linear relationship between uh, viscosity and shear rate uh, on a log scale. So if we take the log of both sides of this equation, on the left-hand side I have log viscosity coefficient, and then I have the, on the right-hand side a product. So if you remember uh, your rules for taking logs, uh, write log A, uh, log of the product AB is equal to log A plus log B. So the product of K times gamma dot it becomes a sum, uh, so the log of k plus, and then exponents become products, right? So um, gamma dot to the n minus 1, if I take the log of that, I get n minus 1 times log gamma dot, right? Log of a to the n is equal to n log a. So, uh, you know, that's why uh, log scale is, is used a lot, because, uh, uh, you know, products become, uh, multiplication becomes addition, and exponents become uh, multiplication. So you can see what I have here now, this is just an equation for a line, right? Log of the viscosity coefficient is what I have on the, on the y-axis here, and log of the shear rate is what I have on the x-axis. So based on this, then this quantity n minus 1 is the slope of this line. So what I've shown here, this equation is a slope for this, pr this dashed line, uh, is an equation for this dashed line, it has a slope of n minus 1 and an intercept of log k. Now, why do I call this uh, n minus 1? Well, um, this power law index is defined so that it's a positive number. Uh, that's, that's basically the reason. Because you can see there's a decreasing function. So the slope is negative. n minus 1 is negative. So we define it uh, in this way so that this value n gives us a positive number. That's, that's why we choose uh, n minus 1 for the slope instead of n. 
And so this power law index is actually important because it gives us a convenient way to compare different materials. So say we're producing different batches of, of some uh, polymer or some uh, non-Newtonian fluid and we want to compare uh, you know, one batch to another uh, or we want to compare two different materials. One way to do that would be to do a simple experiment to measure viscosity as a function of shear rate uh, using a, a viscometer or some other instrument to, that, that can do that. And uh, then we can determine this uh, slope of the shear thinning behavior and get the power law index. And so then we can compare. We can say, okay, there's these two fluids are, are similar or these two fluids are, are different. Uh, and that, that gives us some, some quantity that we can use uh, as a basis to, uh, uh, to quantify uh, whether samples are, are how, how similar uh, these samples are. Uh, and it's not, it's not a physics. This doesn't come from physics. This just comes from an empirical fit uh, to these data. But it's still uh, a, useful, a useful parameter because it, um, uh, it's something that's convenient to measure. Uh, and many fluids, many non-Newtonian fluids, exhibit this kind of, of behavior in the shear thinning regime. So this is a useful, an example of a useful quantity, even though it doesn't have uh, a purely physical um, uh, origin.